it's Pippa. I'm here again to show you more about the wonderful SPSS. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do graphs. So, how to do uh, bar charts, scatter graphs, box plots, histograms. They're sort of the four main ones that you'll probably need. And I'll show you, first of all, you can do it from Chart Builder, which is what I usually use because it's just a bit more user friendly. It's like got pictures and things. Or you can do legacy dialogues. But um, basically, the only difference is here you choose it here. In Chart Builder, I'll show you. It pops up like this. It says playing around with it earlier. Thanks, SPSS. Showing that I had to practice before I made this video. It's all right. Everyone has to. Um, so yeah, you just drag and drop basically which kind of bar graph you want to do, or whichever. You can do line, area. I don't know what that really is. Pie charts. Usually you do bar charts, scatter, histogram box plots, at least they're the ones that you kind of use in social sciences and things, so they're the ones I'm going to show you. So yeah, just drag and drop whichever one you want into the into the arena, I'm going to call it. So on your x-axis you're always going to need some kind of um, nominal kind of clustering variable, so that's the one with the little circles. So for this one, uh, I'm using the same data that I used last time if you watched my other video, um, so I'm going to have a basic study. 10 participants did a reaction time test on some kind of task, either under the influence of caffeine or not under the influence of caffeine. It makes it sound like a drug, it's not what well, I suppose it is. Anyway, um, yeah, so first of all, I'll do independent measures where five of them did it in caffeine, five of them did it without caffeine, no one did it in both, so yeah, nice unrelated design. So uh, this was condition, this is my, my variable for the two. If I just pop across here for those of you who weren't, who weren't in my earlier lesson, I'll say. Yeah, condition was the name of my IVs and I labelled them, gave them values here, one for caffeine, two for non-caffeine, and then I came along here, I put them caffeine, no caffeine, then the reaction time went in the row across. So reaction time, that's my scale data, you always have scale data on your y-axis, I'll pull that across, then easy as pie, click OK. I'll go through and do all the all them for independent first and then I'll do repeated, it's a bit more complicated. So yeah, there you go, there's your bar chart. If I double click on this, it brings the chart editor. I can click on all the different bits and you see, I'm not sure if you see, there's a really faint yellow line around that. That means that I can kind of, once I'm in there, I can change the wording of things. Also quite handy to know, if you double click on the numbers, and then come up here, you get this box here, properties. Go on scale and you can choose, oh sorry, Windows 8. It's a nightmare. Um, you can choose your minimum and your maximum and your increments. So if you wanted them to go up in 0.5 rather than 1, you can deselect auto and just change that to 0 0.5. If you wanted it to go a bit further up than 4, because you might want it to actually go to 5, and you might not want it to start. Usually when you change the minimum, it's because SPSS has seen you haven't got any data that's actually, I'm really sorry about that, I haven't actually got any data that's a 0, so it might make the bottom one like 2 or something. Which might it's not very handy if you're trying to look at like work out things in terms of the scale of things. If things have a zero point, it means they're sort of you can tell the ratio that one is actually double the size of the other, things like that. So it's just useful to always have that at zero. And then click apply, and you'll see it's changed over here. Double click this, just close the chart editor, and you'll see it's all changed here nicely. You can double click on the bars and change the colour, all that kind of thing if you get really bored and want to make your graph look pretty. Um so the next graph I'll do will be, um, you can also do single kind of thing clusters, so if you had another condition, say you wanted to look at participant number, you could pull another, this one's always got to be nominal as well, and then each of these bars will be divided up further into your other category variable. So that's quite useful to remember, but for this kind of study you wouldn't need to do that, I mean it would be a bit weird to do its participant number, so that would mean there'd be 10 different bars going across as well. It's best if you if you're doing a cluster bar chart, whichever one's your smallest number of um, levels, you'd probably be best to put that one up here instead. So you put condition there because it's only got two. That's embarrassing, isn't it? Um, you put condition there because it's only got two, so then you just have two bars, and then participant would be along there, so you'd have ten separate bits along there. But that's pretty much that one. So if we go down to line graph, pull line up there. Um, same kind of thing really. Let's pull condition across here, caffeine, no caffeine, and your reaction time. So you can see that each different point 
will be so you can see where caffeine is and that you can see the relation in a in that kind of plane you can see it normally you want to use if you were doing line graphs you might want to look at um you could put a scale data on the bottom of that one as well i'll just put that there for now to kind of show you and it would give you obviously that wouldn't be a very good experiment but if you're looking at correlations and things you can use the line the line graph and you can actually put scale data on both of those ones and then you can see like if there's any correlations obviously these are very uncorrelated you can also do it for two different ones similar to earlier so you could pull another one which would be nominal up here so you could have two different lines to look at both of them so I could put participant number here for example um, click OK and that will just make your graph for you it will pop up in the output uh, another one's so you scatter scatter and dot plots it's the same as a line chart really and it will just be little dots and they won't be connected and then you could put a line of best fit through there if you wanted so if you were doing correlation actually you'd probably do this one so you could put your own regression line in um, histograms so usually you don't have to put anything on the x-axis and it'll just work out the mean for you and you could put sort of your condition here it's not really going to work there's not enough data <laughs> but oh, okay we'll put reaction times here so, um, I haven't actually dragged okay so if it's doing this and you're thinking this doesn't really like the graph I was doing it might be because you've actually forgotten to drag see learn from my mistakes so you drag the histogram there and then you'd um, put reaction time and it would show you how many times each one of these occurred so that's what the uh, sort of the histogram here shows you and then yeah you wouldn't really do that <laughs> So yeah, this will show you how many times each reaction time occurred and it would along here have the like each reaction time so this might be like two seconds, three seconds, four seconds and it might occur ten times, five times, three times. They probably wouldn't actually be the numbers that are there. But you know, you, you get a picture. If you put um, a nominal one there it will just turn into a, a bar chart really. Um, box plots. So for a box plot, you you basically yeah you'll put your um, sort of like a bar chart. You have your nominal data here, and then we'll put reaction time here, and then you can see the line that goes across the middle is your mean. Around here is your well, this is where the majority of your data lie. And if you get any little circles, they're outliers that are very much not in trend with the rest of the data. And these are your confidence intervals. So this is where, um, usually they're set sort of like, if you had 95% confidence intervals, that would mean that 95% of the data lie within this range. You want, the smaller these are, it means the less variance there is and the closer to the mean most of your data is. So that's quite helpful. I'm not gonna get into a massive thing about what box plots are, box plots? I keep doing that once a video, some weird posh word. I'm not, I won't get into a big debate about what box plots are now and things. Um, if that's wanted, I can sort of give some tutoring on that at some point. But just to kind of show you yeah, that um, once again, you could got the cluster one, you could drag another nominal data point here. It's just really working out what kind of data you can have it on. So Y axis is usually scale data. X axis is usually nominal data unless you're doing a uh, like a line graph or a scatter plot then they could both be scale and you can look at correlations between things. Um, a cluster one will always be nominal data. Okay, so that's really, really easy when you're using independent designs. When you use repeated designs, however, it's not quite so easy. So as you can see, we've got all sort of our data here. If I try and build a bar chart with my independent, with my, right, I'll take this off. So see I've got caffeine and no caffeine here, and I want to put them in repeated measures and see in repeated measures which one the people did best on. Well, I've got two scale data here, and I can't do that. I need nominal data here, and there's two of them, and obviously I can only drag one on. So reaction time, yeah, that'll go there, and then, oh, wait, how, um, okay. So what you need to do is you need to make a new variable and this is why people stumble across it and like are sort of like I don't know how to do this because they don't think about the whole making a new variable thing it seems a bit counterintuitive but yeah so you're going to make a new variable 
a bit like you do with independent. You know how independent you had the condition, so you could put it as um, like they were like the one or two labels like this. So you can do this, but instead of having it for each participant, you're going to do it for the mean. Because on a bar chart, when you put it into SPSS, it's working out the mean anyway. Um, so that's like the number up the side, the reaction time that it comes up as is the mean reaction time for each of the independent variables. You just got to basically work it out manually. And so we're going to do a similar thing. In fact, actually, I've already got condition, have a night. So I'm just going to delete all the rest of this data for now and have caffeine and no caffeine, ignore the participant numbers. And then this reaction time, you'd make it, um, this is actually going to be the mean reaction time. So pretend these aren't here. So you're going to make a, con uh, a variable called condition with labels, value labels of your levels of your independent variable. Then you're going to work out the mean for each of them, which can be done really easily. Analyze the descriptive statistics, descriptives. Um, you'll put caffeine, no caffeine, options. And you can see here, you can choose. So mean is already default ticked. Continue, OK. So you'll need to get your mean. Oh, I've got everything up still in the background, apparently. So yep, yeah, it will bring you a little box up down here. No statistics are computed. Right, yeah, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, I deleted all the data, didn't I? That's not going to work. Basically, yeah, you would have. That's how you would have done it, and it would have come out if I hadn't just deleted all of this data. So I'd have put the caffeine, the non-caffeine, worked out the means for them. Oh, I found out this one had a mean of four. This one had a mean of two. So then I'll go, and in exactly the same way as I did for independent, I'm going to do um, condition. This would have been my new one, which was this one. Drag it across. Reaction time once again, the mean reaction time. You can see here as well, it already says mean reaction time. So we'll drag across that mean reaction time and click OK and then that will make that will make it as well. Yeah, that's a very uninteresting bar plot. I accidentally put the same things in. But that's probably one of the most difficult things, trying to make bar charts for I don't know what I just clicked. Trying to make bar charts. I don't know why it's doing that. Ooh. Chart builder. There we go. Sometimes SPSS does things and you just have to click OK if you don't know what it means. Um, because I don't think anyone probably knows what it means. It's just all, all a bit annoying. These are things that you definitely don't need to know. I'm so popular. Shush. So um, it would be the same if you wanted to scout a clustered one, then you just add another. Line plots for repeated measures. It basically, it's just all the same. You just have your, I mean, we've already said about how you can have, maybe you have caffeine and no caffeine, look at them against each other. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. But yeah, so just remember, key thing is, if you're doing a repeated measures design, remember to make new, a new, variable with your conditions as values, your condition levels, and then your mean of your reaction time, which you can find out in descriptive statistics, and then you can just put those in, and then you will be able to make a graph. And life will be easier, and you'll be able to get good marks in your statistics coursework, or your dissertation, or I suppose you could actually be doing a real research project. But if you're doing a real research project and you're watching this video, I don't know how you got that job. Can you let me know, please? I'd like that job. Yeah. I'm going to go now. I'm bored of making graphs. <laughs> anyway, have fun, guys. See you again soon. Oh, no. What have I done? Yeah, I'm an SPSS person, not a whatever this program is person. Bye.